cost accounting 15C, variable overhead analysis, the four column method. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep. The email address and the website. And remember that our book, Cost Accounting for Dummies, comes out March of 2013, and we'll have a free ongoing course to teach the book free online. I think this method, this four column method, is probably the most difficult one that I teach in cost accounting. Very obscure, very difficult. So let me say at the beginning that typically in four column analysis, two of the four columns are the same. So the result is, is that you end up with three different columns, which is the same thing you have with the other labor, material, fixed overhead, and variable overhead analysis. So, you'll see here that the setup is the same. Actual costs are on the far left. Standard costs are on the far right. And in the middle, we have two items that are very similar. Excuse me. One says, budget and input allowed for actual output times budgeted rate. And the other says budgeted input allowed, allocated budgeted input allowed for actual output. Excuse me, the reason these numbers are the same, you see they're both 227, 200, is that we assume that the budgeted rate that you came up with was also the rate that you allocated with. It is possible that you allocate at a slightly different level than you actually budget. But for this analysis, we say it's the same. There are lots of different ways that these four columns can be different, that these four columns can be set up. But in almost every case, two of the columns are the same. So I have some steps here that I went through. This is the data we're given. Actual units produced, machine hours, other information here that's in the question. And I haven't put the question on the screen because I think this is complicated enough without it. And you'll see that we have uh, six steps here at the bottom. So what I did first was, step one, I posted actual machine hours, 28,400, and actual variable overhead cost, 245,000, to the left column at the top. This number, the hours, this number, the cost, which again, I always like to say is the check that you wrote, the check that you wrote. Step two, I use the numbers in step one to solve for the cost for machine hours. So if I click on the cell, I take the 245,000 cost in blue divided by the 28,400 cost in green, I get a rate per hour of 863, rate per hour. Step three, I multiply the standard hours per unit here times the actual units produced here, 4,400, to get my total standard hours. And in fact, if I click up here on total standard hours, which is in red, and I click on that number, I see that it is the 4,400 hours in green times the standard hours per unit of six in blue. So that's step three. Step four, I take the standard total hours from step three times the cost per unit, which is given. I just did that multiplication. Step five, I post the standard cost per hour to the two middle columns, which show the same result. So the $8 I do this in two steps. The $8 is given the standard cost per unit. I then multiply, click on that cell, I shouldn't have hit return, I should click. The standard hours I figured out in red in an earlier step times the $8 cost per hour that I'm given here at the bottom of the page given to get what my standard amount of cost would be. And then you'll see in, in blue here that the overhead rate is the same for the two flexible budget columns and the standard cost column. They're all using the budgeted or the standard rate. They're all listed in blue. 
So therefore, I can plug in that $8 into all three columns. If once I do that, step six, I can compute the spending variance, the efficiency variance, and the total variance. Here's what I mean. Actual hours were given, so I load that all the way across. That number's in black. This number, the actual rate, was a plug figure. The standard or budgeted rate we just talked about. Standard hours we figured out in an earlier step and actual machine hours is given. So now I can just multiply down. Multiply down. This is the same number. I multiplied down already over here. So the last step is, and I say this often with overhead, there are two types of variances. I either spend a, at a price or rate more or less than I thought. My price or rate is more or less than I thought. That's a spending variance or I used more or less than I thought, that's an efficiency variance. Spent more than I thought, used more than I thought. So the spending variance is just like you see in another overhead analysis, in other variance analysis. It's actual cost incurred in blue, the check you wrote. Oops. You click on that cell again. The check you wrote in blue less the flexible budget in green in the middle it's an unfavorable variance because we spent actual more than our flexible budget. Unfavorable spending variance, which is just like price and rate variance for labor and material. The efficiency variance, flexible budget in blue, less standard in green, all three of these columns use the standard rate. The only difference is we use more actual hours in black then we calculate it as our standard in red, therefore we used more than we thought. The middle, the middle number in blue is higher than the number in green. It's an unfavorable variance. Spent more than we thought. Unfavorable variance here. I can add them together and come up with a total variance. So what we just did was, we did a variable overhead analysis using the four columns, emphasizing that the four columns, two of the four columns are almost always the same. And the reason that two of the columns are the same is that the budgeted rate and the amount that we allocated at the budgeted rate are the same. That's as far as we'll get on cost accounting 15. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.